So I'm going to record this. There won't be any audio, so this will just be mostly just to show you what's happening. I'll see if I can dub some audio on it later on. So, can I have your attention, please? You can stop the conversation now. So this is a, not exactly the model, but it's a model I just quickly threw together this morning of what's actually been printing here. So, the difference between what we had before, the original shape, which would have been a bit more like this, when it was modelled, it was modelled in this position. If you remember, we, um, we created our model and we bent it, we put all the different details inside there. But when we go around about printing it, we need to think about the process of the print. Now, what I've done here is I've tried to think of a, a position whereby the printer may be able to successfully print it. And you can see that I've got a couple of points on the ground where it's fairly close to the contact of the ground. And I've got this belly section here, which I've, it's kind of into the ground, so I'm going to lose a bit of detail there. But there is some structural foundation for the print. So the process after when I have started creating my print is I select my model and I want to send it out to this other software in a format that it would understand. Now the two formats that generally work from most um, applications would be either your OVJ format or an STL format. Now, they, you can find the formats here, if you, everyone looks here, where we've got file type, you can choose the different ones here. For this particular printer, the best option is OBJ, it works very well. Most online printing will either ask you to use an STL format or an OBJ format. The STL is the one that they would generally ask you for. So I'm going to use OBJ, I'm going to select that and go export selection. And it's taking a bit of time to work. I think that's not due to computer, but when it's exported, I've already done one here, I've got, that's the exact file there, it's 17.9 it's megabytes, and with, here we go, there we go, I'll just put this one, that's a fish bottle lecture, so that's been exported out, so you'll see now that I've got a, where is it, fish bottle lecture there, with Windows 10, you can double click on an object just to check to see if it's okay. And that will also help us to see if there is any intangible geometry. So that's my geometry there. It's come out clean. If there's any parts of it that were non-manifold, they would appear and I'd be able to see straight away that there's anything wrong with the model. Okay. So now that we've finished with Maya, we want to take it into I'm going to take it into this program called Cura. Now, I will reload another one in later, but I've already loaded this one in in the position that it's currently printing. Now, when we have the object brought in, we can use, we can select the model. You can see when it's selected, it's got this blue outline and we can translate it, we can rotate it, and we can scale it based upon what we believe is optimal for the printing process. So, at the moment, with the current configurations, and I'll run you through that before we go and look at some different ideas and scenarios, but with the current situation, 
it's set to print for two hours and 10 minutes. I started the print that you're looking at here about, uh, at about quarter past 11. And so it's already been running, getting close to two hours now already. So I'm not sure if it's close to finishing, but it's a very small print. But I just wanted you to at least have something to look at by the time we got here. So the process is we want to position it on the plate properly. And here we can then preview what the print would look like. Now I've already done a preview print, a preview, and it's showing me the creation process. So along the side here, well there's two things that you can actually do here. One, you can choose a level. So we're gonna go through and see each level as it's created, and it's gonna show you a simulation of it. So for example, in this first level here, I can press play, and it will show you the way that the printer will go about creating each of those levels. Now you'll notice it's drawing a circle underneath that fin. And if we just kind of push it forward a little bit, so a lot faster than it will do it, it's gonna also draw a platform underneath the belly of the fish. Now this is called a sticking plate, and it makes sure that whatever we print will have some good foundation upon which it can build itself. So that's the first layer. And we can go through and look at each layer to see what would happen as it builds up. So now I'm just gonna go layer by layer. And can you see inside here that it's creating not just the outside layer, and that's that, that tolerance I was talking about before. Remember I said 0.1 mil tolerance? Each of those little lines of plastic, that's your one millimeter tolerance of what this printer can handle, it's the finest setting it's got. So if you want something to be more detailed, the only choice you've got is to make it larger. For this current resolution I've got with 0.1 millimeter tolerance, that's the kind of print that we're gonna end up having. So we can fast forward through the printing process and pull it up and you can see what I said before, it has its own ideas as to what would be a good supportive internal geometry, which allows it to have the thickness that you've specified but also give it the internal support to hold itself together. So I see it starting to create that star formation on the inside there to help to support the fish. And when we start to get interesting details, like on the outside, the circles, they are being supported by these shapes here as they're popping up on the outside. So it can advance further and further and see the process. Now this one here, I actually expected this to fail I'm not sure, i have to have a look at the model in a second. But this is very precarious. This, if you ask a bricklayer to make this structure here, it's very, very difficult and precarious to build. And the chances of this one here failing are quite high as it goes up and connects it through there. But it's got sufficient tolerance there to, to build up and to get something to happen there. And as it builds up, as long as it's got that layer, when it reaches the top there, it's gonna meet up and bond and once we get past that danger zone there now we have a solid foundation upon which we can start to build the rest of the model now this won't automatically come up with this particular solution you have to go through several different tries until you can get it to create the solution because it is a solution it's a problem to what we want to create. Now, can anyone notice that something's missing on the side here? All those little spirally shapes that I created before, they're all gone. I'm getting evidence of them popping out the side here, but most of them are gone. If I look back into my prepare, prepare, uh, the model I was preparing, that level of detail at 0.1 millimeter is not gonna come out for that sized model. So we just have to accept that we're not gonna see that and that is just, again, understanding the limitations of the 3D print. That's what it can do. And the other thing which I expected to fail, which I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't yet, is the tail. The tail as it comes up, that is something that I would be aware of and concerned about, the angle that it's poking out from the back here, as to whether or not it would be able to complete that shape. So hopefully now you can see 
the process and how that is building itself. It's been fast forwarded for you there, but in each one of them you can see the way that the printer is going, its process as it goes through here. It's gonna lay out a, a row there. I'll just make it go out a bit faster and then come across, load this in and go around and around in circles and fill it in until it finishes that particular layer. So it's done single strata by single strata from the, the bottom up to the top. And with that current level of detail, this is taking two hours and 10 minutes and a meter of filament. So if you'll notice over the top there, there's two little tubes leading into the machine. That's the filament. If you, if, when you can get an opportunity, look on the back. There are two spools with reams of filament strapped around the outside. So you can choose the material that you want to print with. We've got some different colors down the bottom here and there's black and white currently inside um, the machine itself and that gets funneled through this little printer head where it's heated up, melted into a, a thread of, of plastic which instantly dries and starts to create that print. So, now that we've seen the current print, let's have a look at some other scenarios that we might um, envisage happening with such a print. So when we prepare, let's just start from scratch. I'll get rid of this and delete it. And say open file. So I'll get the one that we just put in here for the lecture. We just exported that one out. It brings it in. Reads it, interprets it, and then throws it into the scene. So currently, at its initial interpretation there, that's the way um, it might want to print. Now, the problem with that, as we all should understand now, is that it won't hold itself up. If we went to preview, you'll see when I've gone from prepare to preview that it is a hollow, invisible shape. And if I wanted to see how it would print, I'd have to click this button saying slice. Let me just go back to this simple setting here. So if I click slice now, it will go through and it will analyze the model and it will work out what it needs to do to make a print. And it believes that it should print with a nice big blotch there and then build that whole thing up and print it there. But there are some sections underneath here where you've got overhangs and you can see they're being um, highlighted as being difficult areas, problematic areas. So if for whatever strange reason you wanted to print this one like this, there is another option here saying support, where it will create supports to allow such an unusual configuration to be printable. And for that to happen, this is what it decides that it needs to create this extra geometry, which you can then slice off to allow that to be supported. But you can see that this considerable amount of extra geometry has been created there, but it'll take an hour and six minutes. Without the support, it's saying 48 minutes. Now, let's try some different configurations. So I can select my object and the same way as we can rotate something in Maya, we can rotate our object round. And I think that it's probably better if I set this to snap, so it will go in nice increments until I can get it to a particular angle. Now, you'll see that it snaps to the ground straight away. There's a little bit of material popping through the ground there but there's several different ways in which we could try and work out a solution. So that's the solution that I had in the current print. If I click slice, and go into preview, sorry. It's telling me it's gonna take 48 minutes and that there's going to be some problems down there. See how the, the, the these don't quite hit the ground there. So I would have to change my orientation a little bit and maybe not to turn off the snap a little bit until, am 
I have to keep trying this until I get some adhesion on the ground. So I look back at my preview now. So now just changing that, can you all see that? Has now found a good spot where it can touch the ground and it's got a possible path to create itself. Now, if we were to try it from some different angles, let's try this one. That might work, I doubt it. <laughs> That sounds like it's finished. That's good so this potentially could work. It can take 47 minutes. And it's another potential solution. So let's have a look now what we've got. That should it's a bit hard to get off. It's very hot actually, we might just leave it there for a while, let it cool down. Um, but that's taken two hours to print and I think that that's really successful. <laughs> I, I had actually hoped that it would fail so that we would see it happening. But if you were to look underneath, right underneath the bum of it, underneath there, you'll see that there are the little hang off, things hanging off like little uh, whiskers and the like. That's where it's tried to print and has had some problems. You may need to clean them up with a, um, an emery board or some sort of cleaning material. But I think in general, that's worked out quite well. So let's just reflect back on here onto the preparation just to show you again the issues that I was telling you about with time. See that? I forgot to mentioned that I haven't changed the size of this one that's why it's only taking 47 minutes to print the size of that one there is much much larger so if I was to grab this and now go down to scale and get it up to something a lot larger so that's something that's going to occupy a good percentage of the available space or let's say something ridiculous maybe not that big that's too big you can just undo that undo that and okay so that's it has to stay within the bounds of that volume because that's the region within which the 3d printer can operate now that's a very large print and if I was to slice this Hopefully we'll see that one, it's going to take a very, very long time to print. You're probably in the order of 12 hours to print as compared to the two hours for a very small print. On average, a general decent sized print should take with this particular printer around about... Okay, so it's going to take one day, 11 hours and 15 minutes to print at this size um, with only 20 meters of cable. But we should see all the detail that I was talking about before. Can everyone see there? All the little swirls and, 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 and material like that. That will all be visible with a print of that size. So that's just the, the, the things that we need to take into consideration. If you do have lots of very, very fine details on the surface of your model, that you'll have to scale it up for them to appear. With the current scale that we've got there, it took about two hours to print. Um, I don't actually remember how much cable it would have taken, but with those really, really small ones I was showing you before, that was about one meter of cable, he will have hit 20 meters of cable, which is not possible with a single spool. Okay? Um, so the way it works from here, this is something I haven't expressed to you. Normally there's a, a network running through, but for this particular uh, process today, once we've got the model done not that we're going to do this but I would then put my USB in here and there's an option saying save to removable drive so it would save that in a particular format which I think is a GZ format um, where is it
G code or G code GZ. So it's just a, it's a specific format. And it's now ejecting it. And it then runs directly off a USB. It should have Wi Fi connective, but today it wasn't working, so we'll just do it the manual way. So you put it in a USB, it will read the USB, and then we need to remove the print. I'm just hoping I don't break it. It's still very hot. No, I won't remove it, but um, I should say print removed. So when you choose the option to print, it will look at the latest thing. It can see there's the, the model off the, the drive. Do you guys see in there or not? You just assuming that you'll see eventually. You would just select that one and then it would continue. I'm not going to continue now. Um, I'm going to abort that one. Click and abort. But that's it. That's 3D printing. So does anyone have any questions about that whole process? Most of the difficult work is here, configuring, orienting your print to get it to the best possible way so that you minimize the amount of material, time, um, and all the expenses involved with 3D printing. If you were to do this online, you can upload your stuff online, there would be some poor sod like me who would have to go and do all that for you, and you would just pay lots of money and get a beautifully finished 3D print online that would be sent to you. There's a lot of online services that will do that for you. If you do want to do it through here, um, I can do it for you. You just need to give me your material when you're ready and that we can test to make sure that it's suitable for printing because we don't want to go off and um, waste a lot of material unnecessarily. But if you want to, we can get it done through here. It does not happen very quickly, as you've seen. It takes up to four hours to get a decent print out. Um, but it is possible. Um, so with your work though, when you are creating your work in class, what I would like you to do with the export, see how I've got these as OBJ files and if I double click them, you can look at them. I should be able to look at your work on an OBJ file and check the way that you've positioned your model. So I'm not asking you necessarily to print it, but I wanted you to imagine that you're going to print it and for you to position your model in a way that you think it should be able to work optimally in a 3D printer. Okay? Everyone cool with that? Yeah. Great. Thank you very much.